Hey, welcome to A Little Better. My name's Daniel. I'll be your host. Today on the podcast, we're in week four of a series we're calling A Church That. And on the podcast today, Drew, Brad, and myself, we talk all about sanctification. Do you have to work in order for God to love you? Is Bible reading part of that work? Is doing good works part of that work? We talk about all that and so much more on today's episode. Remember, our goal on the podcast is to know Jesus better and by the power of his spirit, do better. So together we can be a little better. Well, hey, welcome to A Little Better. We're super excited to dive into week four of our series, A Church That, talking all about a church that is a work in progress. Drew, you were preaching again this weekend. Uh, Tell us your sermon in 60 seconds. It's a pretty simple one. Um, If you want to make progress, you want to be sanctified, look more more like Jesus, you can't do it without knowledge and action. So those two things are tethered together. We see that in James. So we need to just look intently in God's word and then obey it, do what it says. And when we do that, it'll change us. We'll look more like Jesus. Nice. Is this just a you know, version of what what was called like works-based righteousness or just, hey, do better, do more, do it more better, and then do it again. So God will love you. (laughs) No. (laughs) How is it, how is it um, not this? How is James and even your sermon Sunday not approaching the gospel and sanctification in this way? Well, because you have to have, James is saying you have to have an understanding in a relationship with Jesus, which drives you to his word, which drives you to uh, a greater knowledge of God. And out of that knowledge, it transforms the way you act, the way you live. It's not a, I'm just going to go do a bunch of things morally. There's a foundation. So it's not even morally, it's spiritual transformation um, that comes from a foundation of God's word, which leads to a transformation of your actions. So you're transforming your mind and your heart through the Word of God, and then you're transforming your actions and how you live through that foundation. Yeah, because after later on, I was trying to find the verse here, but later on, James will say, your faith without works is dead, dead, right? Mm, right. And so he's not saying, like, pick one. Uh, he's, He's doing this both and approach. And so I want to nuance this for those listening just a little bit from your message from Sunday is, you know, you talked about us like, hey, we need to really dive into God's word for ourselves. We use the word in our process in Northridge. We need to uh, feed our faith. We Mm -hmm. have this individual responsibility uh, as well as a corporate responsibility as a church to be kind of all of us moving together. But as the individuals get better, we as a collective get better. And so talk to the person who maybe um, was uh, like like I was in high school, right? I don't actually enjoy reading my Bible. You know, like h- how do I grow in that? Like how do I begin to like it? I don't know. <laughs> Can I? Uh, so I I don't want to move off the first one so fast. Is okay, that possible? Yeah, yeah go back oh, sorry, to it. Go I'm back messing to it. up. Yeah. So so te- you just teased what's coming yeah. in the podcast. <laughs> That's but what's coming. As far Stay as tight. like the. I mean, I think for those who are in their Bibles, it becomes this, is James contradicting Paul, you know, kind of thing. Right. Because, you know, and Martin Luther comes out of the Reformation with justification is by faith alone. And it just seems like, how do you, how do you even say, you know, James says, no, it has to be faith and works. You know, and Paul says, it's faith alone and tells the whole story of Abraham mm. and the promise and it's all, you know, by faith. But it is that... Um, difference in what they're both attacking, right? I mean, if you are trying to earn your way to a point of approval, that is a fool's errand. That will never work. That will only, that's, that's what will destroy you. And I think some people, even as we get to the next question about loving the Bible, I mean, if you're doing the Bible to earn points with God, you mm-hmm. know, you know, and trying to pass some sort of theological exam, I mean, you're trying to be good enough, that's going to going to destroy you. But what James is saying is that, you know, these works are, they're not what accomplishes our salvation, but they're the evidence. Well, it's the difference between two theological words, Mm -hmm. justification and sanctification, Mm -hmm. right? Justification is the process of being made right with God, and that's solely through faith in Jesus' cross and resurrection. Mm -hmm. And then once you are justified, Mm -hmm. 
you now need to be sanctified. And mm-hmm. sanctification is the prog- process mm-hmm. where we're made holy, set mm-hmm. apart, look more like Christ. And right. so you have to make sure you understand those two terms. Being justified has nothing to do with what you did, but being mm-hmm. sanctified has a lot to do with what you do. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I love... I. For a class that I'm, I'm taking, I had to read a, a book, like Five Views on Sanctification, which is, you know, really nerdy, but... Um, <laughs> so you but, loved it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So, um, but I loved, and it was basically given these five different, you know, Christian evangelicals positions on how do we understand what it means to become more like Jesus, to be sanctified. And I loved, I don't even remember which camp it fell in, but there was a, a scholar that said, our sanctification is learning how to live in our justification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was like it's learning how our new position in Christ is like supposed to be worked out yes. in our life. And so it was just I loved that that mm-hmm. language of they're 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 so conjoined together that we are justified first and then we are being sanctified, but that whole process of being sanctified is learning mm. how to actually live yeah. in this new identity yep. of who we are in Jesus. And mm-hmm. if, if you look at the writers of Scripture, I, I even love you know the Gospel of John when he uses that word of believing. He's always using it as an action verb. You know, he's like, it's it's an act. It's not just this ethereal knowledge like, oh, I I kind of tip my hat to Jesus. They can't be separated. Yeah, they mm. can't be separated in the sense of like there's also another dangerous side of I tipped my hat to Jesus one time, prayed a prayer, I'm good, I have faith Mm -hmm. that he's going to save me one day, but my life has zero evidence, zero fruit of Mm -hmm. me loving Christ, me, you know, working out my salvation, if you want to say Paul, Pauline language. Mm-hmm. Um, like, well, those two words, are just like faith and works are tethered together, justification and sanctification are tethered together, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You can't be sanctified without being justified, mm-hmm. but you can't be justified without the evidence of sanctification. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, again, those it, it's that ongoing pro- progress, right? Or this ongoing journey. And that's faith too, mm-hmm. right? Faith is not a one-time decision. It's an ongoing process. So my faith starts with justification, but my faith continues and gives evidence of the beginning through the process of sanctification. Yeah, and Paul and James are using that word justified differently. I mean, mm-hmm. Paul is using it to mean approved by God. God. That's totally by faith, totally yeah. through the work of mm. Christ. But James is using the word justified to mean validate, to mm. prove yeah. the validity of your faith. Mm. The faith was, I mean, it's the faith that got you got you saved. But if yeah. there's no works, I don't think that faith is very genuine. Yeah, yeah, Real. absolutely. Yeah, and so in the midst of that, if you got that figured out, you know, which is <laughs> which is a whole lifelong journey of following sure. Jesus. Yeah. But uh-huh. if you understand, you were preaching to, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you were preaching to those, those people who have identified that, yes, Jesus and Jesus alone is the Savior of my sins. He's, he's the forgiver of my sins. He is the leader of my life. Now what? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. And that in, in that now We are what? talking clearly about sanctification yes. right here. Yeah. Right. In the now what, we have kind of three questions that we want to kind of nuance. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to all three of them. And that first one was, let's talk to the person who maybe uh, is a new Christian. Maybe they've been Christian for a couple of years, but they've never figured out this personal time with God, you know, mm-hmm. like when it comes to reading God's word, they're, they're the person who answers the question. I'm like, I, I connect God with God better through music or just like walking in the trees. Like, but that the Bible seems so blah when I read it, how mm-hmm. do I grow in my love for actually spending time in God's word, mm-hmm. um, in that regard? Do both. Bring those together, right? <laughs> I mean, I love reading, the, you know, having a day out by myself you know, on a picnic table with the trees, you know, that's a great place to read the Bible away from my computer and everything else that, you know, you know, distracts. But um, I think uh, I I was just uh, reading, uh, started reading um, Dave Miller's book, A Praying Life. And he talks about the kingdom of, he quotes C.S. Lewis, talks about the kingdom of noise. And I just thought it was amazing that C.S. Lewis talked about the kingdom of noise decades before cable and the internet hmm. and all the distractions that we have today. But but part of, I mean, it's, it, it is so hard to fight for that time to 
be silent, be peaceful, to give full attention, mm-hmm. you know, to, you know, you know, to the Bible when there are so many distractions, getting those away is hard. I think it's also a, like, I think we have to renew our mind. Uh, we mm-hmm. need a perspective change. Cause if I were to ask anybody, if God wrote you a book, mm-hmm. would you read it? Everybody would say yes. Mm-hmm. If there was a God and he wrote a book, would you read it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. he did. Wrote it to in the you. Bible, <laughs> right? The Bible is God's revelation to us. And so mm-hmm. I think sometimes before we read the Bible, we just remind ourselves, this, this is God mm-hmm. writing a book so we could know him. And just that perspective change, I think, helps. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I'll be the first to admit, I don't love reading, partially because I feel like my Monday through Friday gig is all like mm-hmm. I read a ton. So the last thing I want to do in my free time is read. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- you don't have to just read the Bible, right? You can listen. It's interesting. James I says do. listening to the Bible too, even in mm-hmm. a world where like there was no MP3s, there was no like downloadable. So if you struggle, there are mm-hmm. great resources, resources out there that can make the Bible come alive. I, I am very much a visual and audio person I find when I play the Bible, I get more out of it than mm. when I read it. Mm-hmm. I found that when I play the Bible with my copy of my Bible, I get even more mm. out of it. Mm. And so I think there's ways that you can adjust to your learning habits. You People learn differently. And so yeah. some of it is like maybe you just need to listen or maybe you need to listen with a copy of God's word, but th- there's no excuse. Mm. Mm-hmm to not read the Bible, listen to the Bible, right? I think people say that Mm -hmm. because, one, they genuinely don't understand how valuable the Bible is. Mm -hmm. They haven't given it the time to really seep into their life and see the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. They usually give up before that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's one of the greatest excuses. I don't like to read. I just, the Bible's hard. Well, like, give it a chance. And a chance is not like, you read it for a week. Congratulations. No, I'm like... You spend a year in the Bible, be committed to reading it, and see what mm-hmm. it does in your life. You'll it'll be you will you will begin to hunger and thirst for it. Yeah, and that's good. So many formats available. So many. Tra- I grew up. I'm old. Enough, I grew up with the King James, so I had to learn Old English to understand yeah. <laughs> my Bible. <laughs> that's right? right, and then now there are um, translations, not only in modern English, but even okay at different reading levels. Yeah. Um, you there's there's such a buffet yep. you know to choose from yeah. in terms of how to consume yeah. God's word. And, and in that that buffet can make it more challenging sometimes, right? It can, it can make it, it more can. challenging. Sure. Confusing. So I I'll I'll give a little in this regard just my tip is three three P's, you know, just like any good preacher, sermon, three right? P's, oh, right? Boy. Sermon sermon in sixty seconds, right? I think for for you to grow in that is it's kind of like growing to enjoy a kind of food that you don't like, right? Like a yeah. vegetable or, or growing to enjoy how many how many stories have we heard about people wanting to have a healthier lifestyle and work out. It's like, okay, I gotta do this a lot mm. before I actually started enjoying it. <laughs> like right. it sucked for a really <laughs> long time. And then now it's yeah. like I crave, you know, going for a run or a bike ride or the gym, whatever the yep. case may be. And so I think the first thing is have a plan. You know, you have a plan of like I'm going to read my Bible when I Whenever, like it's it's gonna, I'm gonna have a time. I'm gonna have a, a system, kind of, of yep. going through. Like, okay, I'm gonna read the Gospel of Matthew, and then I'm gonna do the next one, or just having a plan in that regard that you can follow along. And there's so many good yeah. reading plans out there with on U version, or mm-hmm. um, even just through the Bible in a year, uh, Bible in one year from Alpha Ministries. Those are all good plans. And then have um, ha- from when you have a t- plan, have a place. I think having a, a consistent, like I do this. Here, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it could be really cool. Like a good suggestion. I was taking a walk this last week, and I had my headphones, and I literally played the NLT dramatized version of the Bible on the U version app, and I was just listening as I was walking through the park, yep. and that was just so cool because I was listening through Exodus and uh-huh. um, like Moses' story of getting called out in the burning bush while I'm walking in the park. I'm like looking for a burning bush. You know, so <laughs> it's good. So uh, and then have a, I think the third one that helps us is accountability in our life. So uh, since person. it has to be a P a person, you got. It, right, yeah. so I like, thought that's where yeah. you're going. I was, yeah, like, it's I having a person, a person in our life that can hold us accountable. But furthermore than that, I think what really helped me of like learning to love God's word was uh, journaling. And I don't mean like pages and pages. It could literally be like five or six lines yeah. in a journal of okay, here's like one thing that I want to take 
and, and place into my life from this one. I'm going to zero in. Maybe I read a chapter, maybe I read two chapters, but I'm going to zero in on one thing hmm. and, and like kind of journal a prayer to yeah. God on this one thing. And that helps it be more tacky and sticky in my life of like, I'm going to remember this. This is the thing that I'm going to take with me today. Yep. So, I, I love that. That's super, super helpful. But I also love your point about like who diets for a day and says, eh, I'm not getting the results I want <laughs> and gives up. Actually, a lot of people do that. <laughs> you know, actually, a <laughs> ton of people that? actually do that <laughs> exact thing. <That's> <laughs> but it's so salad. true. We do the yeah. same thing Still with really God's hungry. word. Yeah. 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 I read one verse and it didn't transform my entire being. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think I'll read that anymore. <laughs> I saw a pastor last week. He was talking about t- spending time daily in God's Word, and he pulled out the box of his journals. Mm, yeah, and he literally he pulls out what did I what was I thinking twenty five years ago and mm. opened up. Here was my encounter with God twenty five years ago. Yeah, and just think about the legacy that could leave if you're talking about passing on your faith to generations of yeah. like mm-hmm. if you just you know journal that thought and, and mm-hmm. read or if it's if it's you marking up your Bible. I know different people have different opinions about that, but of like mm-hmm. passing it on to your kids or <laughs> your grandkids or whatever the case may be of like, oh, mm-hmm. look at, you know, my grandpa, my dad, my mom's thoughts on whatever this may be. It's well, and really the value cool. of it. Like, so I, I just don't think we value God's word. I, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to that truth. Mm-hmm. And Joel turned eight just in September. And one of, the, one of the things is like a huge parenting win. We got our Bible and we got our like these really cute pink tabs that for, you know, like, I don't remember mm. the old school Bibles that had all the tabs with all yeah, the books. Yeah. So you yeah, just yeah. grab the tab and go to the book. So we put all these really cute glittery tabs with like, it said Genesis, Exodus. Yeah. And we gave it to her and I was like, babe, I'm a little nervous about this gift because I don't know any kid that's going to be like, you got me a Bible. Thank you. <laughs> just for, but she was in love with it. Oh, and wow, I was like, what great. a win. And I just, I think even as parents, one of the greatest things we can pass down, one thing that my dad passed down to me was a love for God's word. Mm. I have so many Image, images of my dad with a big Bible on his chest, laying in bed, reading it. And it was just like, this book is important to my dad, mm-hmm. right? This book, he reads it regularly. And I think w- the value, we have to learn, the, v- the it's the most valuable book that mm-hmm. you can ever yeah. engage with. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, I, I heard in a sermon a couple months ago, but just if you want your kids to grow up being readers, that he's just using this, just reading in general, not even mm-hmm. reading the Bible, but there's two predictors that your kid will grow up with a love of reading. It's, did you read to them and did they see you reading? Mm. Those are literally the two things. So it's like, if you're trying talking about passing on, it's like, did they see you do it? And that's what you talked about with your dad of like you seeing that act of, of your dad doing it. You know, another challenge for me is always Psalms 119 is a a massive Psalm all about a love for God's word. And I'm always challenged every time I go to Psalms 119 of just this writer, just pouring out their heart about how much they treasure and love and value and get out of God's word. And it's like, man, do do I do I live and and actually have this thought, these kind of thoughts about God's word? It's like, man, I struggle, you know, thinking about, oh, how I love your word. How many of those lines people start with that? gave their life up yeah. mm-hmm. to copy it. Yeah. yeah. Like literally right. just write it down so mm-hmm. we could have records of it. Yeah, that kind of scarcity was quite the motivator. I mean, we're yeah. we're spoiled. We are yeah, very so spoiled. much. Yeah, and so we we've talked about the second question, which I wanted to talk about more is like, how do I, you know, have a more intentional Bible study? We we talked about some of those things, you know, because what what I love that you drew out of this message is not pitting one against the other. You talked about the balance a lot, and and that word in verse twenty five of James chapter one is like anyone who looks at the word intently. Mm-hmm. So there's this deep study aspect to it. It's not just like oh I heard it, yep yeah, we're good. Like that's what you need to do. Is it's it, no it's it's this intense study in God's word of, of of figuring it out. What is it trying to say, and what does it mean for my life? So let's spend the next few moments talking about this next question is, okay, how do I take my personal Bible study and actually put it into action in my life? Like, okay, James says, do it. Is, is it really that simple? And what does that mean? I mean, I think, yes, it is that simple. I think what's hard though, is there are sometimes you read your Bible and you're like, I'm not exactly sure mm. what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And I think this is where, you know, especially we as a Baptist background have to leverage the spirit of God. You know, when we are justified, one of the great, great, the greatest gift of justification is the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. God living inside of you. And if God wrote a book, 
Jason, did you hear that? <laughs> Jason will love that. It's an inside <laughs> joke. But if God wrote a book and then God put his spirit inside of you, don't you think God's capable of opening your eyes to exactly what you need to hear mm-hmm. and what you need to do? But I just think we need to be sensitive to the spirit of God that lives in us. Mm-hmm. And it's as simple as saying, okay, before I read this, God opened my eyes to truths that I can't see mm-hmm. and actions that I need to take. Yeah, You know, what mm-hmm. a great prayer before you read your Bible. Show right. me what I can't see or even what I'm missing and show me what I need to do from this. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think God is big enough to separate seas, to yeah. resurrect from the dead. He could probably show you that. Yeah, that's good. There's a little little bitty thin thin book that I'll say out of the two other books we've mentioned. If you don't pick up one, pick up this one. Uh, it's really thin. It's literally called uh, before you read your Bible, uh, like it's called before you open your Bible, I believe is what it's called. And it's just talking about, I believe it has like 10 postures yep. that you need to take mm-hmm. before you crack open God's word. Because I think one of the most um, damaging things to anyone's like study of God's word is just haphazardly opening it. Like obviously God's spirit can do Anything. whatever he For wants sure. to do in that. But when we just lack lusterly, like, okay, it's time to read my Bible. It's, you know, seven o'clock in the morning or it's whatever. And we just boom, let's start reading it. It, Mm -hmm. Our heart is just not ready. It's the same of like, if we just enter into a church worship service, just like, Mm -hmm. okay, here we come. Like, this is what we do. It's Sunday at 930, whatever the case would be. Like, if we're not in that heart posture of of Mm. us getting right with God, getting ready to receive God's word, when we get ready and then God's spirit of uh, can work uh, wonders in in all it's situations, true. but we're so much more sensitive to His Spirit when we are like, okay, God, if you pray that simple prayer, settle my mind, clear my thoughts, yep. you know, show me what you want me to know and what you want me to do. Like as simple as that. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of the need for a couple of reality checks. Yeah. Um, so, and you guys can see what you think about this, but like I. You may not get a killer insight every day. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Mo- most days. <laughs> but still, every piece of God's word is a piece of the whole, yep. right? So, and as you start, I mean, what you lack when you start is context. You'll you'll read something and it's just like, well, how does this fit into the big picture beginning to end? And that's something you accumulate over time. And you have to read the whole Bible and then and get a sense of mm. how the whole thing is. And, and then over time... It, it's, it may not be a killer insight, but where does it fit into the whole mm-hmm. of what God's trying to say? Because the temptation early on is, yeah, you open up a Bible, you hit a verse. Oh, that sounds like, that's a great proverb. That's a great psalm. Yeah. I love that. But you have no idea how, how, it, the connects, context, how, how it connects, connects to the whole. So not yeah. a killer insight every day. And what was the other one? Was just, um, again, I just think that's a great analogy to either working out or the dieting or whatever, yeah. is it's like... There's effort that accumulates mm. over time. Yes. So you're, yeah. you're 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 planting those seeds. You're making yeah. that investment so that you know those. Mm. Sometime later, you're gonna have a crisis where yeah. that scripture right. yeah. becomes so real good. and meaningful to you. Yep. But you not unless you had sowed it. Yeah. Well, and I think also like expectations. Every time I read my Bible, I'm not walking away like, oh, here's the list of things I have to do. Like mm. bomb, bomb, bomb. I, but I think it's just a pattern. Maybe another P pattern. Pattern. Like, like come on, you need a pattern of like (laughs) consistency of the whole book Uh and you know a pattern of like living out certain principles it's you know again i I don't want to put the expectation on people of like every time i read god's word i have to find something new Mm. and i have to do something major yeah that 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 is not what every Bible study yeah. looks like. Yeah. But the more I consistently live this pattern out, the mm-hmm. more over time at the gym, my muscles are going to grow. Mm. My spiritual muscles are going to grow. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be transformed yeah. slowly. Yeah. Well, I love, I just remembered, you know, you guys jog my memory to uh, a sermon I heard probably 10 years ago. Um, but of, of, of being that pattern, that consistency in God's word. And, and the pastor was bringing that out. Like you may not get anything, out of all these days, and he was talking about his own, you know, journeys. Like I got nothing, you know, like nothing again, another day, nothing, 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 nothing. But on day forty-two, it clicked, maybe. Like it's like he's like I had forty-one <laughs> days damn of just dry, yeah. like, and then. But it's boom. like boom on. But I needed that consistency yes. in my life to mm-hmm. be like, this is what I'm doing. I'm I'm working out this muscle again. Like mm. you know, it's it's that it's that lift, lifting weights or running. Like you know, every day I'm running a mile and it's hard hard but then all of a sudden like i break through that wall yeah. like on whatever day and it's like 
it's easy. And it's like, now I'm running two miles or whatever yes. the case may be. It's just mm-hmm. stretching those muscles and getting them in this pattern of this is important, this is valuable, yes. and this can bring benefit um, to our lives. And so when, when we have those days of like, boom, this is what I need to do, um, bring some clarity to us around just putting it into action in our lives of, okay, now how, what are the steps to say, I need to make a change or I need, I need to kind of put some, if you want to use that word, work into this um, to, to obey what I've got, you know, what God has spoken to me through his word. There's <laughs> more peace coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how about prayer and partnerships, right? I mean, like, the episode with a lot of peas is the title, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you need people in your life uh-huh. to... I would say even clarify. Sometimes we can run so fast into mm-hmm. doing something that we can almost go overboard, right? Mm-hmm. And you need you need accountability, people in your life to say, hey, I, yeah, I think, let me help you do that. You need accountability. You need someone to bounce things off of, right? I, again, you want to have a, 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 a spiritual journey that is your own, but it's not solely your own, mm. right? You're surrounded with people who are going to help you live out the things that you want to do. Because there's been so many times where I'm like, I need to do this. I'm going to do this. Yes. And I, I know it's the right thing to do. And I do it. And I do it. And I do it. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm. You know? And that's where accountability and people, I think. Yeah. It's it's our, our growth goals also in our community groups, yeah, right? Community groups. Like, it's like, okay, I want to grow in this area yes. over the next 10 weeks or the next 14 weeks. And I need you to hold me accountable to this yeah. um, in, in that regard. And it could be super practical or spiritual or blend of both, you know, right. Yep. In, in this regard. And we have a whole list of, if you, if you're really bur- getting burdened, you know, later in that same chapter and James, you, you brought this up, but of caring for the, the orphan and the widow of like, if you want to get engaged in our city with some organizations who are running after that, we have partnerships that as the church, we want to come alongside these things to carry out the mission, mm. to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Or it could look like some of those six things that you mentioned, like, serving like okay if you want to grow spiritually all those things are helping us grow spiritually get making a commitment to gather yeah uh, be in community group and partnership or feeding our own faith we talked we've talked about all these things and all these things are helping us grow but i i believe that you grow so much just by serving other people you know Uh, that's what jesus did all right Mm -hmm. as, as we wrap up this episode everybody give us one just final nugget final thought or something you want to draw our attention back to that we don't want to lose from from this this conversation. I just want to say that we've all experienced, it doesn't matter how many years you've been exposed to the Bible, it's, there's always something new. Mm. So it's not like, well, read it through, got it, you know, I just feel, you know, um, I'll read a history book or something. Oh, now I understand that. I'll never go back <laughs> right. to it. But the way the Bible, and again, some of it is that fruit of, because I know so many cross-references because I've gotten to that point, but there's always something new. And I think a lot of the new, um, I think it was Mortimer Adler, How to Read a Book, says rereading books, you know, it's all about the questions you ask. And life forces the questions. You know, life is going to force you, my kid's far from God, what do I do? Or um, I'm struggling, you know, with purpose, or I don't know how to, whatever, right? Mm. There's all these crises will produce questions, and you will always be asking different questions of the Bible, and it's going to come at you new. So it just, it's always new. There's always something more. I think what I would say to somebody is everybody in their life wants something better in an area, Mm -hmm. right? I want to be a better father, better whatever, you know, better dad, better uh, Mm -hmm. business leader. Mm -hmm. I think Whatever area that is in your life, the best thing you can do, the mm-hmm. best, mm-hmm. is be in your Bible. Yeah. Right? And, and again, I know you might not find the answers to, to those things immediately, but if you're committed and you spend time in God's Word and are willing to do what it tells you to do, it'll mm-hmm. change your life. Mm-hmm. The last thing I would add is that as you're, as you're seeking to be better and get in God's Word, the thing I want to recall our attention to, we've, we've said in this, is, is heart posture before you open the Bible, is, mm-hmm. is, is having that, you know, if you have a plan, if you have a, um, a place and you have a person, you have all these things set up in place, uh, get your heart right before yeah. you open God's Word. Is, is say a simple prayer um, of, or have a, have a system in place of how, how you like, okay, I'm going to take 
three minutes of silence and just clearing my thoughts and praying for God um, to, to, to speak to me through his word as he's given me mm. uh, this book for my benefit um, and just mm. opening God's word. So um, for the Holy Spirit to move in that time and, and just get your heart right before you approach mm. God's word. So thanks so much for tuning in this week's episode of A Little Better. We can't ha- wait to hang out with you again next week.